Ciao, everybody. Welcome back to the Bianca Neri Zone on a special Christmas edition. Merry Christmas to those who celebrate. Happy holidays for everybody else. It is a special time of year with family and friends. And what we're going to be doing today is going on a Christmas shopping spree in terms of what we think is going to happen in the January transfer window from all the minor things to let's get crazy. So like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and all that stuff. I, I do sound a bit sick because I've been battling something. So um, bear in mind or keep in mind that I have a nose issue right now. So with that, we will get right into it. Basically, what we're doing is we're going to go through a bunch of players and are they potentially coming to Juventus in the January transfer window? And I get it that we are in a managerial piece of turmoil or place of turmoil right now um, in terms of board of directors and all that stuff. But apparently we will still have, be able to address some areas, but we definitely need a wing back. We definitely need center backs and especially Bonucci's out long term, like we all know. And at the end, we're, we're going to do some of the fun stuff, some of the hmm, that's probably not going to happen, but let's dream. So first off, we're going to go with the wing backs and we're going to go with I'm going to sit over here first. We're going to go with Joki Miley. Um, so Alejandro makes the nice pictures and all that stuff. So kudos to him. But I don't know where you got the 20 million from. Did you get it from transfer market? Uh, maybe. <laughs> But I have no idea. We will not be spending $20 million on Joki Miley. Um, best case scenario for us would be a loan plus option uh, for him to come into the team and make or take, I guess, the right wing back position. He is a good player. Uh, definitely on the international stage, he's a good player. Uh, for Denmark, as you can see, Ali took a picture from Denmark and not uh, Atalanta. With Atalanta, he's not been the best, but maybe with better players. Um, he can thrive. So joking Miley, again, if, if it's a loan plus option of like 10 million to 15 million, I'd say, yeah, do it. If you're saying anywhere upwards of 20, stay away. So there's joking Miley. Next up, we got, uh, nobody wants this, but he's been linked to us recently. It, it's a loan for Karsdorp from Roma. We all know the, what happened to him and Jose Mourinho at Roma. It's not looking good. He, he's basically getting kicked out of the club, and now he's been linked to us and, and a few other teams as well. This is worst-case scenario. I hope this one does not happen at all. So I don't want to go into it too much more with Rick Karsdor because we don't, we don't really need to. I don't want this to happen at all. But he's been linked, so he has to be part of this show. Next is, is the final wing back on the on the right side um and it's an eternal one and it's uh barbieri so basically we've added him in because it, it's a free uh, you see it's free because he's coming from the next gen team uh it's more of a promotion if anything he's played a couple of games now in the december preseason or whatever he played against arsenal he played against rietzka and he was fine. He was, he, was, he was all right. And now he, he's signed on an extension for his contract to stay with the club. So you might as well bring him up to the to the squad, especially with all the injuries. Quadrado's still hurt at this moment in time. So Barbieri could be an internal solution to our right wing back problem. Now, is this is he gonna help you? He'll, he'll be he'll help you compete with other things, but will he allow us to compete for second place or, or first. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see over a six-month period how well he can do with time given to him. So good for Barbieri to, for making that next step. Um, we already know that Illing Jr. has made that next step. He, he's already signed for the first team now. Um, the next-gen team is starting to cook. And stay tuned to the channel because I'm, I am doing a youth report very soon about the next gen and who's who's the next one. <laughs> so we'll move on to our next target, um, Ferlan Mendy of Real Madrid. So I don't know what shot means on that screen, <laughs> but for Ferlan Mendy, I've chosen to add him because 
he is not being extended a contract at Real Madrid. Um, and it's looking like in, in their club, Real Madrid and Ferland Mendy, that uh, things aren't going well between the two. Um, would he instantly be our best left-sided player? Probably. Um, because he's very solid defensively and he can join the attack as well. Not, not, not like... A, He's not an attacking-minded fullback, but very solid defensively and can contribute in the attack. So if there's any way you could possibly sniff around Ferland Mendy and, and try and get him to Juventus, I would do it ASAP. Especially if we're not if we're not sold on a 3-5-2. If we want to revert back to a four in the back, then Mendy should be t- prime target, top of the target. So next, we'll go into the center-back range and... This guy's been linked to us in the past. Kivior from Spezia. Um, he played in the Polish national team in the World Cup. He was okay. I'm going to say he, he was he was fine. He was okay. Nothing special. Um, he's a younger player. I think he's 22, 23 years old. He's had some Serie A experience with, obviously, Spezia. They're lower on the table, but maybe, maybe <laughs> um, he can take that step up, like I said, with Meili, with better players around him. It only makes sense. Um, 25 billion scares me, the price tag there. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I wouldn't be mad if Kivior came. I would be mad if it was 25 million spent. So stay tuned for that one because that one I, I could see happening. Not in January per se, but like in the summer maybe. But uh, maybe a loan plus option with him as well. Next is uh, a name that we all know. It's from Frankfurt, Evan Inditza. He's going to be a free agent at the end of the season. So maybe Juventus pulls a Dennis Zakaria with Evan Nditsa and uh, we go for him. Left-footed center back, we want one of those to play on the left side instead of Alexandro, obviously. So if it's Nditsa, Bremer, Danilo, at the, when there's three at the back, you take that, it's very good. Um, if it's if we're playing four in the back, then you do left back, Nditsa, Bremer, Danilo. It all depends on the situation that Allegri puts us in. But if we get, let's say, Nditsa for four or five million euros because of his contract status, you do it. You do it. Just like the Zakaria deal last year. And then, worst case scenario, if it doesn't work out, you do the Dennis Zakaria and you potentially sell him for way more. <laughs> so there you go. Next, we'll go to another name that's been linked to us, and it is another World Cup player, World Cup center back for Serbia. It's Pavlovic, Strahinja or something, Pavlovic. He's been linked with us and the whole Serbian connection thing. Pavlovic is a Wish.com Giorgio Chiellini. He defends, defends, defends. Um, not as good as Chiellini obviously ever did, but his his main attribute is just balls to the wall defending um he got caught up he got caught out a couple times during the world cup so there's that but again 30 million i hope not i don't see us paying 30 million for pavlovich so we'll see what happens from there but i wouldn't mind pavlovich either left footed as well for a cheaper fee and now we're going to get into some of the more crazy stuff um the first couple won't be too crazy because they're outgoings that could potentially happen and they've been reported on recently but let's go to the first one our horse rabio um so similar situation with inditza with rabio um contract ends at the end of the year we all know that could we cash in a little bit of money now do we want to do that i personally do not care if you sell him now, great. If you don't and you wait till the end of the season, fine as well um, to to let him go on a free. I don't really care because if he stays, he'll be fine. And if he goes, we get money. So I don't care. Um, and a roster spot. Yes, he's been our best, our best midfielder for three months. But the consistency throughout his whole contract and his whole time being here, I don't care. Like, it does not move me whatsoever. Um, I won't consider it a loss, to be honest with you. If he goes to Tottenham, let him cook under Conte. That'd be maybe, maybe they end up with Bentoncourt, Rabio, and McKenny. 
<laughs> and stay tuned for McKenny. But uh, yeah, if he goes, I don't care. If he stays, I don't care. Th there's positives to all to to whatever happens in the winter. Uh, Mercato, it's all up to him. It's, it's all up to Rabio at this point. Um, next we'll go to like we mentioned before, Weston McKenny. Um, value again weird. <laughs> I, I would be thrilled if we got 30 million for Weston McKenney. Um and his potential suitors are Premier League teams. So there's that. Um if Rabio and McKenney were to leave, this is why the next name up, you'll see why we added that and included that. Um Weston McKenney, he is not a good he's not a pure footballer. He is a niche type player where he gets into the box and he's supposed to score goals as a midfielder he works hard uh, he's combative his touch is crap his passing is crap um he had a decent world cup so maybe it boosts his value a bit but for the most part at juventus your time's done in my opinion buddy i like you as a character i li like i like you off the field you're fun you, you do a lot of things that's good for english-speaking juventus fans um but in terms of on the field stuff you're toast I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm and again, I'd be thrilled with 30 million euros. So we'll move on to the next target. Well, we'll move on to the next name. And if Rabio, yeah, the dream, it's right there. Um, if Rabio McKenny were sold, let's say in January, there's a massive hole in midfield that you need to recoup in terms of player personnel and. Now that there's no board, I think it might be a little bit harder to acquire Milinkovic Savage. But there were so many whispers of Milinkovic Savage in the media with decent sources like Nico Shira that I still think it's on the table. I don't know if it's going to be January, but I still think this guy is on the table for Juventus if we wanted to go get him. Now, do our current investigations mean anything so we can't get him? At this point, no, because we haven't been convicted of anything yet. So if you can go out and get this guy after you sell McKenny and Rabio, obviously, then you have to do it. You have to. This guy is non-negotiable in terms of quality, talent, and skill. Serie A proven. Like, it's non-negotiable. Like, you go get this guy. 60 million sure do it anything over that no but if you're selling rabio and the wages are gone if you're selling mckinney and the wages are gone there, there's no reason why you can't get milinkovic savage and book it further ahead i know people are gonna say oh you guys you guys don't know how to do accounting anyway but you know what they, they figured it out <laughs> they, they figured out the balance sheet six months later don't worry we got this let's go get milinkovic savage and the people that say he ghosts um, in big games, we don't know how he'll play with Juventus and especially in big games for Juventus. So I wouldn't worry about that. I need a player that guarantees me skill, playmaking, tackling, goal scoring from midfield. This guy does that. Let's get him in. If, again, if those other players are sold, because of course, we're not going to get an eighth midfielder for 60 million euros. It doesn't make sense. But that is the main, well, the next guy actually, this guy and the next guy are the main Christmas miracles, if it happens. So let's let's check out our next one. And it's uh, Joao Felix. Now, Justin and I did a live uh, fairly recently, uh, maybe a week ago. And he said, he made a great assessment or a point. He said, Dusan Vlavic goes away, Joao Felix comes in. I said, you know what? Absolutely. I'm I'm in for that. Why wouldn't we do that? That makes too much sense. I'm not saying a direct swap with uh, Atletico Madrid. I'm not saying Vlavic goes to them. Joao Felix comes to us. Um, I'm saying if we were to sell Vlavic to the Premier League for 80 million, why can't we go get Joao Felix? I think if we play a 3-5-2, and he plays the Kaka role, like for Milan. Um, he plays just underneath the forward. If it's Milik, fine. 
If it's uh, Moise Keen, fine. If it's Felix and one of those two up top, and Joao Felix, and, and then Chiesa is playing off of him on the one side and somebody else playing off of that is excellent. That is dy dynamism. That is, that's perfect. You got the target forward up top who's either Milik or Keane, and then you got this guy floating underneath, making runs in behind. That is what a 3-5-2 should be or should have in terms of player personnel. So this is the this is a pipe dream, of course, because I don't think we're selling Vlavic. But if Vlavic wants to go, this is the guy you get. This guy. So that's my two cents. What do you guys all think? Um, what is your who's on your Christmas wish list? Let me know in the comment section down below. Um, my two biggest dreams are if Vlavic left, it would be Joao Felix. And if McKenny and Rabio left, it would be Milinkovic Savage. So let me know what you guys think. Again, happy holidays to everybody. Merry Christmas to those who celebrate. And we'll see you next time. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Catch us next time in the Yonkin Zone.